So this is uh, a Shire colt. The, unfortunately, the man had some problems when he was trying to break it, which he, you know, explained to us, which was lovely. Um, which is always better if people are truthful with you, exactly what the horse has done and, you know, what's happened. And he, he explained in great detail what he'd done. The horse had got away with a tyre behind it, basically, and frightened himself. Um, and made him very nervous. And his answer to that was to kick out, yeah? So, you know, he, his other horse's answer would be to, you know, but he would turn his quarters on you. So what he'd done, and he was very, very funny around his quarters. When you want to put britching and a creeper on him, it took quite a bit of time to get the harness back on him. To get, the, get him accepting the harness, I should say. You know, getting it back on him was hard enough. But getting him to accept it, it took a bit of time. But he's a lovely, lovely, lovely horse now. Um, a child could drive him. All he's got is a soft bit of rubber in his mouth and it's all he's ever had since he's been here, as all the horses do. He's got one of our bits in, you know, the ones we have manufactured, I think, in this one. Um, so he's a real nice, you know, free-moving horse. Lovely. We can't do a great deal with him. Um, so he's walked around a great deal, you know. But he's... Not, he's not mature in his body in as much as his ribs haven't sprung. But he is... Um... Oh, my baby. Steady. Walk. Walk. So, you know, he knows his job now. He's good in traffic, like that. But his answer was to kick. Um, you know, and he has, you know kicked badly in the cart, we put him up alongside another horse. Um, I knew he always would, and if you say, you know, people would say to me, why did you put him in the cart? Obviously, um, if there was any other way, but he wasn't going to accept anything behind him, no matter how long we took doing it, you know, people, you know, time is not always the answer, and quite often it's not the answer. Um, sometimes it is, but with this particular horse, he got to being a little bit of a bully, pushing his weight around, being hard to handle, wouldn't listen, you know, so when he had the, the, the problem, he would, you know, then start thinking, oh, I can do what I like here, because obviously the fellow is on his own and uh, he's had to back off him a bit, you know, because of the sheer size of him and power of the horse. So we had to overcome all that. Anyway, as you can see, you know, he definitely kicked and bucked. There's no two ways about that. But he also did in the stable. Um, we don't carry cameras with us constantly all the time. Uh, you can In the stable, he would be awkward, you know. He would, as you come in the door of the stable, he'd turn his quarters towards you. And he would mean it. You know, there's no question of doubt whether he meant it or not. Um, when he's kicking, as you can see, you know, when the horse is kicking, he's not kicking the car, get this off me, he's kicking the person driving or attempting to. So wherever the voice is coming from at the time, he'll kick that way, you know. So we've changed all that. And he's a lovely, I mean, seriously, anyone can drive him, handle him, you know, quite seriously, he's lovely to handle. Pick his feet up, pick anything you could possibly mention, you can do with him, you know, no problem at all. So, but he can't take in any more than he has now. He's, he's only got a certain amount, like any horse or any, any, any child that goes to school, he's got a certain amount of, you know, room to take in information in their, in their brain uh, and have it there and, 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 you know, it's there as a permanent fixture. By that, I mean they, they remember, they understand, they know what you want. Do you know what I mean? So that's the important thing. Morning, ladies. The uh, so yeah, good boy. But he was handful. We we'll make no mistake, you know. And it'll, we, we don't mind. We don't mind how, how they are in any way, and we'll get them straight. But it's lovely, and it makes it a quicker job. Trot. A quicker job and an easier job. If um, people are 
honest with you and tell you exactly what happens. It doesn't matter. Anybody can make a mistake, you know, and there's nothing nicer than breaking your own horse and, and, and training it. The problem being, like for a lot of folks, they're working. So the training is interrupted, it's not consistent. You know, you get this weekend, then next weekend we'll do again, we'll do a bit in the evening. But you've still got everything else to do, and that's often all, you know, especially all like this, once you start doing it, it's got to be consistent every day, sometimes twice and sometimes three times a day. Three little 10 minute lessons, 15 minute lessons, would be better than an hour out driving. So, as I say, he's a lovely, lovely horse. Now, you can see he's happy going along, his tail's off, his quarters, his ears are pricked forward. He also had um, sweet itch when he come. But Reed has managed to sort all that out, and I mean, he's made a lovely job of it. There's no scabs at all, he's clean right down to his skin, there's nothing whatsoever anywhere. You know, she has lots of... Um, stuff she makes up <laughs> it leaves me you know stand there bewildered because you know some of the stuff she'll use to make a, a potion up for different horses and certainly this one's worked really well I think what what does help with all of them that have got the itch is uh, that they have they get used to the pressure washer the hot water washer so we can set the temperature um, not to not to burn the mites, not, not that or anything like that, or not for that, not for that purpose. But they, what? Come on, baby. What you can do is, good boy. Come on. Um, it cleans the skin. So and then real add a remedy. But as you can see, this horse was og maned when it come. I mean, just look at the length of mane. It's getting on it now. You know, where it's standing up. Must be four inches or more. And its tail was very very thin at the top and sore and now it's lovely now you can say well he's in all the time well he's also out all the time so always can get bit while it's working just as well as he can and we've got a lot of uh, a lot of flies about that, that cause it at the moment a lot um we've got another horse well a couple of horses that have turned out near us, never had it before, horses that have been turned out, you know, a long time, and, um, yeah, it's, uh, come on baby, they've got it, and they've never had it before, they, one of them, I think one has been on the land, the girl was telling me, for four years, and this year's got sweet itch, you know, and the horse is eight year old, so, and another two in the same field, now, I don't know whether it's to do with, you could, it does go in cycles anyway, but it's definitely around. So, you know, I'm very pleased with the fact that he's, you know, clear of it. There's nothing worse, is there? He don't want to be uncomfortable with a collar around his neck because he's got, you know, so he's all cleaned up, he's nice. So it's my advice um, to the man that owns it to turn him away. Now, this is a big problem when you've got a stallion, obviously finding somewhere where you can put it where it's not going to be a nuisance. Um, but even if he was in a, I mean, the ideal place to keep him is in a, you know, if you've got it, if, um, a sand paddock with a decent fence and maybe an electric fence around it, you know, around the top hole. Um, and that seems to work really well uh, for, you know, for stallion horses. But they're hard to find. Like when I was down in Florida, I saw three or four stallion horses as we was going around Florida that were kept that way. You know, when I was out there doing clinics, and the horse is lovely. You can see everything that's going on. He runs around. He can't have a five-foot-high fence with a, a, a you know, a electric fence sitting in into the paddock and a sand paddock. Well, um, and one fella there, he had a, a little machine, something like we pick leaves up with, a little tractor and it just went round and picked up all the poo in the paddock every day which was great you know and so the horse could roll back and play you know we could have a couple of colts out together you know having a great time so I don't know whether the fellow would be able to do that and then you've got to ask yourself why would you want to keep him as a stallion if he's going to cover mares and such like lovely 
and he's a nice, nice of his salt. He's a nice horse, a lovely bone. He's going to make a real big horse as well. He's over 17 hands now, uh, I believe. I think we sticked him at 17 one. Um, he's got another. Well, he's got certainly got two years more growth in him where he could get more height. So he could end up, could end up 18 hands. You know, he might end up 17 two. That you can't say. But he's level now, so he'll have another burst. Definitely his, his quarters will go up and he'll be taller. So yeah, lovely horse. And he's been a challenge and that's, you know, no problem. And at the risk of repeating myself, it's lovely when someone tells you exactly what's, what's happened. Because, you know, it just makes life easier. And you know, better for the horse, you know, it's obviously. Let alone better for us, I mean, it's, it's better for the horse. But when he's in the car, I'm not blaming the owner for that in any way. The only way we could do it was just putting the harness on, putting the bridging around his quarters. He would want to lash out, you know, and he'd got that, you are not doing anything around my quarters at all. You're not touching that end of me. The other end, no problem. He could put his bridle on, his collar, breast collar, pad, no problem at all. Do the girth up. As soon as you went to the back end of him, he didn't like it. Now you say to me, why didn't he like it? Well, he ran off with a tyre. So I'm not saying this did happen because I don't know. And, and, and it all happened so quickly for the fella. He wouldn't be able to give you, you know, chapter and verse. Only if you'd have filmed it and then you could see. But often what happens is if the tyre leaves the swingle tree, or even if it stays on, if the tyre bounces because the horse is going so fast, the tyre can actually bounce up onto the horse and bang it up the quarters, could knock him round the ox, um, and certainly if the tyre comes off, Ree's on the reins at the moment, driving this great big horse. Um, and here's a big old lump of horse, yeah. So Ree's driving him just one handed there, you see. Ree doing the job. <laughs> Ree's normally on the car, been given the camera. The reason I'm doing this is just to show that, you know, Ree with a little tiny person can drive him, just got a soft bit of rubber in his mouth and he's going sweet. Got a nice sign here, an unusual sign. So Ree's going to keep him over to it. We can see, she knows how to read horse. He's got his ears pricked having a look at it and she just let him go like that. Lovely. So what Ree done there, I mean I'm not talking to her or telling her what to do, you're seeing it with your own eyes. They, like. She's a trainer in her own right, you know, just behind the camera more than she's in front of it. But these signs here, so the horse pricked its ears up at the sign and had to look at it. So Ree just brought it over gently towards the sign, not forcing it over, just sent it towards the sign. Keep the right amount of tension on the rein so the horse is taking some, you know, what the, the horse moved its ears back and then pricked to the sign. So it was asking Ree, have you seen this? Is this all right? You know. So she's, by the movement of the reins and how much contact she's got, she's saying to it, yes, okay, no problem, yeah, I've seen it. So basically that's it. So we're coming down here. This road here is um, the road between, well, Andover and Stockbridge, I suppose, you'd say. And um, it's a good road because it can be fast. You know, people can choose to go fast on it, but also what you get is big, big trucks on it, and I mean some seriously big trucks, such as tankers, um, grain lorries. Um, they do come up here, not many, but some come up with all the straw on, but that's nearer home, we can see more of those, with all the straw coming off the fields. You know, well, it's more or less all off and gone now. There's still some that's, you know, standing in fields in a pile waiting to be picked up. So you get all sorts up here. 
and it's just uh, that's it, lovely. old truck coming through by the side of him now. A bit noisy the old truck. The horse don't take a blind bit of notice of it. He truly is a nice horse but he's got as much so he's traffic safe. I suppose the only thing he's not going to have um, well, it might have yet. It's, it goes in the river, stand on the motorway bridge, or going over the 303, the dual carriageway, stand over the top of that and look down. Um, so he's all there, really. Um, the only thing he hasn't done, to any extent, is the arena. But if we was to push him through the arena, ask him to do it in the short time we've got left, um, wouldn't be the best thing to do. I mean, we take him in there, he's not afraid of it. But that's, I think, too much for him to hold on to at the age he is. You know, in an ideal world, he wants turning away. And, um, basically, he wants, you know, just turning away for the winter. But as we've already said, that's easy said and hard to do when you've got a scallion, especially one of this size, you know. You know, when you want a, 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 you know, a, a decent eye fence, because he just, a normal fence height, he'd lay over, wouldn't he, quite easily, so. Hold up, let him go, go on. Letting this lorry come, he started to overtake. But that's a nice one, so we stopped it, let him overtake. The horse ain't upset by it at all. So that's really okay. good, you know, I mean, that's just great. So those things, sort of things happen. The lorry's come, he thought we had a clear run. Um, you know, just misjudged it, as we can all do, you know. You can't condemn a man for that. Um, he just misjudged it. Lorries come round there a bit, uh, cars come round and then vans a bit quicker. So, so now we're just letting him have a walk. He's a nice one coming up here now. He's not uh, seen many of these. So he's got to go right over the whole thing, you see? Like Reed's just put him. He can't walk round the 30 sign that's on the red. The red's bad enough you know, to get them to go over with confidence. But that's just lovely, you know. So he's, he's probably there, doing the job. Now you've got a slow sign coming up here. Think. So put it between the L and the O, right in the middle. Right. And then Reed's just done what I've asked him to do. That's lovely, another time I'll say to him. A nice old tank of air going on a bit faster. So you see traffic's no problem to him at all. Farm machinery, everything, no, you know, no problem at all. So, but he can't do the distance as yet. That's his problem, if he's got a problem. Um, he can't do the distance yet. But he will do, you know, no trouble at all. He'll be up there in a minute doing it, yeah. I'll put it this way, he could certainly do the distance without any trouble at all, but he'd be tired. And therefore, that wouldn't be any good because you want the horse to face the world, not, you know, where he's tired, but when he's fresh. So... Come on, baby. Come on, Tate. Get up. So she'll ask him to cross over his legs now at the front. Yeah, lovely. Another nice thing on this road is the fact that a 
lot of these motor cars these days, the lights turn on automatically when you're in a darkened area. So you'll get ones that are coming through, you know, light and dark areas where the shade is from the trees. And their lights will, especially like this one here, for instance, with them newer motor car with the very white lights. And they're quite good for all, every, every step they take they can learn from. A nice old motorbike, yeah. So yeah, that's lovely. Old skip lorry with the chains on it making a row. Another big truck here. Well, not a big one, but a truck anyway. Them skip lorries are very good, you know. We don't see enough of them really. Um, or as many as we'd like to see. There used to be a firm that weren't far away that kept their lorries there and we'd see a lot of them. But they've moved to bigger premises now. You know, they was just off the route. Well, one of the routes we use quite regular. But um, as I say, they've moved away now. But it's the... Not so much, well, there's two things about skip lorries. There's one, the chain's banging on the side of the skip itself, which is lovely. And normally they've got rubbish on and a, and a big old net over it and often stuff flapping about on top, which is good, you know, that can, you know, it's all good for horses' education. I know people, you know, might think we're crazy because that's, <laughs> that's what we're looking for, but that's our job, is to, is to show them as much as we possibly can so that when people get them home, they've seen it. And once horses seen it and cope with it all right, not seen it and been frightened, but seen it and cope, you know, with it all right, then, you know, you've got then no problem, really. You know, they, they, they don't forget, they remember that, and, you know, that's it, yeah. So you see this horse here's got a little tiny bit of sweat there. Um, it's just started raining now. But it was a little bit... Uh, a little bit close, a little bit muggy, maybe, um, prior to that. It looks like it might have broke a bit of thunder or something, but that's gone and it's just a very light drizzle now. We never did have the thunder, you know, which is another thing that's lovely when you're out and you get a big lightning and a crack of thunder. is a good thing. All she's don't take much notice of that because they grew up with it in a field, but when you put them in harness in a different situation, often that can, you know... Just unnerve him a little bit, maybe. I'll keep cleaning my lens. I'll take my instructions from Re. Have you clean that lens? Well, she points at me and says, "Have you clean that lens?" You know. And yeah, is the light on? Yeah, the light's on. Yeah. So, you know, this is lovely, and yeah, we go out in all weathers, and I think it's it's another part of training that's so important, because the, the road surface, you know, the noise of the motor cars and trucks on the road surface changes dramatically when, um, when it's wet, obviously you get the the, you know yourself you, the sounds different you've got the the splashes and you know water laying on the road and the side of the road and then just the noise of the tires going over wet ground is entirely different to what you would get on a dry road you've got the wipers going I know you say well that, but the wipers I think you know if horses never seen the wipers going on a car he wonders what it is you know according to our um, on, you know, wipers on big lorries. I mean, I see a lorry the other day, funny enough, and it had, like, white blades. I suppose it was to keep the pressure on the, uh, you know, keep the pressure on the, of the blade onto the screen to clear it better. 
but it had like white pieces on it. And when they was flopping about, they looked strange. And also looked at that. You know, so everything we do is done for a reason. We stand on a motorway bridge only because once I was a, 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 a motorbike took an, a car that was on coming towards us and uh, he misjudged it as he went to overtake the motor car that was coming towards us, he was behind it obviously, and he, he went to come past and then he come off the motorbike and it skid right across the road um, and right in front of the horses, or would, would have hit them. So I had to pull them up onto the, so that's a lovely one there, that old trailer was a little bit rattly, so that was good. Yeah, so that's why we do that. And people say, why would you drag a sheet of metal? Because if you get an exhaust come off a motor car or a lorry coming past you, that's serious trouble. Also, you wouldn't have heard any noise like that. Highly unlikely. So, But if he's heard the dragging of the thing, yes, he might be startled, but he's very unlikely to do more than that. So that's why we do it. So every mortal thing we do is done for a reason. And this going out in the rain, and this rain's really heavy now. Um, coming down really heavy and, and that's a good thing so I mean obviously we wouldn't choose to be out in the rain and getting soaking wet would you all down your trousers your jeans get wet you know regardless of how you're covered up with waterproofs you know you get soaked so she's just saying to him come over now for this sign that's it that was a strange looking sign so she just give me a little tap with the reins. I know perfectly well, you know, that um, that's frowned upon in the driving world. But what I would say to that is you will touch your quarters, the horse on the quarter with the reins, regardless of how good a driver you are. And how much experience you got, that will happen. And we are braking horses, training horses, gentling horses, whatever you want to say. That's what we're doing. So we can certainly use, well, we don't use whips as such, but we can certainly use, you know, our sticks with a sponge ball on the end. Um, but sometimes when you're, you're doing it's more convenient and easier to have just the two reins in your hand, one in each hand, um, for what we do. We perfectly drive perfectly well with one handed and with a whip and use it in the correct manner, but... That's not what we're about here, we're about training, entirely different things to when all she's finished and done. And you can sit there with your reins in one hand, you're whipping the right position and look the part. Yes, nothing wrong with that, very nice to see when it's done correctly. So, you can see this tipping down here now, absolutely belting down. I think you see more of my hand on the screen, keeping it clean. There's another one of these signs now, and we will be able just to bring him over and not touch him at all with the reins, and uh, just bring him over and let him walk past it, you know. So it was different to the other signs we've seen coming the other way, because it's got a little red square on it with some writing. So you see, this time she don't need to do anything and bring him even closer. So everything we we do is is done for a reason. He's a nice horse, this, and I just hope, well, I don't know what the fella intends doing with him, but if he can have the winter off and, um, you know, we'd have him back next next year for a, for a week just to get him back in, you know, if that's what the man wants or whatever he wants to do, you know, we'll accommodate, but that's what I think. He's learnt everything he possibly can. Um, there's a few little gaps that you could say, you know, we'd, we'd like to have got done, but, you know, with the tooth problem, etc, etc. You know, the big wolf teeth. I'm having to keep this lens clean. The rain's quite heavy, you know. So as I say, there's just a few bits we haven't done, the arena being one, I mean he'd do it, he'd walk around there, it wouldn't be a problem. 
if we feel that he'll do it and, and, and get it under his belt, that's what we want to do. He's not just take him round there. Um, and I'm certainly not going to rush it. So you see on this narrow lane, well, quite narrow, not, not uh, terribly narrow, but the old truck's coming past, all different colours and sizes. And he's going straight on, no trouble at all. So this is pleasing. Obviously this other traffic was trapped behind them lorries. Couldn't overtake the lorries, not two of them together on this little narrow road, so it's built up a bit of traffic, but he just don't change, he just carries on in exactly the same way. So yeah, lovely little boy. Nice ladies. Just What we have to be careful from in this rain is that um, the little coachman don't shrink any more. <laughs> but we we do worry with shrinkage with the junior trainer. Do you know what I mean? She has shrunk a bit before. <laughs> There's a smile on my face every time I hear that sound The rhythm of the hoops as they touch the ground 